Hello, everyone. How are we doing tonight? <laughs> I hope everyone out there is having a lovely day. Where we're at here in Oshawa, it's a little bit chilly, but very sunny. So I'm so glad to have that after some very great days indeed. Welcome to the Living Room Community Art Stream live stream, studio stream. Let's call it something different, shall we, or not? Today, I'm here. My name is Mary Cronert. I'm going to be making art with you for the next hour. Yep, that's how this works. Hello, Anthony, and hello, One Hummingbird Lane. It's good to have you here with us. I almost drank my paint water. <laughs> it might be that kind of night, folks. <laughs> so for those of you who are unfamiliar with this little bit of wackiness. Uh, my name's Mary. I'm here on behalf of the Living Room Community Art Studio. This is our live stream virtual art hive time where we get together online to create, to chat, to listen or watch, to make art, to do things, to return to that creative process that we have in our lives that maybe we've set aside for a little bit too long. This time, this is protected time for you to create if you want in whatever capacity you might be have available to you wherever you might be at. You can make art with us, but perhaps you also feel like doing something a little different. Maybe you feel like doing something equally as creative, but not necessarily in a productive kind of way. Maybe you're generating ideas. Maybe you're refueling and just need to use this time to relax and get back into that place of inspiration for yourself. Maybe you want to bake cookies. I don't know. Whatever it is, you do you. And you know what? Just like in the real Although this is a real studio, the in-person studio, the in-real-life studio. If I'm doing anything that makes you feel weird, please let me know. You know, I like being held accountable for things. So you can always email me if you have any questions or concerns at info at livingroomcommunityartstudio.org. And on that note, if anything else happens in the stream that we need to address, feel free to bring it up in the chat or send me a message afterwards. And we'll find a way of working with one another to help support one another more effectively. That's what we call here in living room land, creative humaning. It's not always easy. It doesn't always look pretty. And oftentimes it's pretty awkward, but that awkwardness, that uh, weirdness is a really interesting place. And oftentimes really wonderful things emerge from that wacky wonky wibbly wobbliness that we call growing. Hey, Laura B. Hey, it's good to see you. My goodness, tonight's a nice night. We've got some lovely folks in the chat. Ah, that reminds me. If you feel like chatting, that's fantastic. That's how I know you're here and I can chat back with you. But if you'd prefer just to be quiet, to do your own thing wherever you might be, that's okay too. And for folks who might be watching after, once it's been archived, hi, how are you doing? <laughs> I don't always have time to return to the chat to respond to people, but if you have a message, again, email me. That's what I'm here for. And of course, you can chat to one another and get to know one another and perhaps use this time to troubleshoot any creative, you know, obstacles you're having in your work or seek inspiration from other folks in the community. We've got an amazing community, either in person out here in Oshawa or Durham region or Ontario or online make use of it. Your resource is in the room. <laughs> so tonight what we are doing is inspired by two random things I drew out of the so-called living room hat. One which was kind of an activity or an approach or a technique. Uh, what I drew out of the hat this week was music. I'm not a musician so this is going to be interesting. The other theme I drew out was celebration. Now, celebration, I think, hey, oh, Emily says hi. Hi, Emily. Hello, Emily. How are you today? <laughs> See, that's how the chat goes. I just do that, right? Um, so music and celebration, these two themes that I've drawn, drawn out for tonight. And we had a really nice Zoom art hive, which happens every Wednesday morning at 10 a.m. Although check the calendar to make sure, you know, every once in a while, I do like to take a break and I might be taking one next week. We'll figure it out. Uh, that being said, yeah, I draw a theme out of the hat every week and we work with that. And the Zoom Hive was really interesting. Okay, I'm gonna be honest with you here. When I drew out celebration and music, I kind of wanted to put them back. Now, it's not that I don't love both of those things. I love music. I can't imagine my life without music. Music is involved in 
every day. Every day I have music on whenever possible. I go to sleep listening to music. I wake up with music. I work to music. I play to music. All of the things, right? Music is so important to me. But again, how do I bring that into the space with community when I can't necessarily be there with them in person? We created a live stream, a playlist that you can listen to over on our Spotify channel. But, you know, that's something we can listen to during a Zoom or perhaps if we're again sharing space or we can listen to each on our own, on our own, wherever we might be. But it's not something I can do here. And although I love singing and making music, again, this platform doesn't always look too kindly on that when it comes to things that are copyrighted. So I thought, how can I bring music into this night? Well, I'm going to be working with partly whatever you throw at me. Second, I'd like to work with the feeling of a song, a song perhaps that we're all familiar with. And you might have your own music that you want to put on to create with and warm up with and just let inspire your movements. I'm not going to be listening to my song tonight. I'm going to be remembering and imagining my song. Uh, and it's a song a lot of you are familiar with. I was thinking a lot of the themes that came out of our Zoom Hive had to do with light and nature and sunshine and brightness and connection and owning ourselves, whether that's owning our name, owning our sense of joy and how we move through the world, whether or not other people might like it or not, if it feels good, the sense to us of being true to ourselves and making the world a brighter place, you know, all of that kind of stuff. That brightness, that brightness was present in the Zoom. That came up as a big theme and feeling alive in that brightness. So I'm going to be using a, Here Comes the Sun. And so if you have this song on hand, feel free to play it to re-familiarize yourself with it. But for a lot of us, I think we can conjure that song, well, pretty much instantly. It comes to mind for a lot of us. We've grown up with it or it's seeped into the pop culture of our lives, even if we're a little young, younger than some of us in the stream tonight. Uh, it's just here with us. And there are many different versions. We might, You might have a special one. I'm sticking to the original by the Beatles. It's a song, I think, that just snaps into one's being when you think of it. At least it does for me. So I'm going to be working with that song tonight. You can use whatever song you like. It can be a song you're listening to in real time. It can be a song you're remembering as well. It's an interesting challenge to remember a song, to conjure a song. And that's what I'm going to be playing with tonight to inspire the work I'm doing. Oh, that's good. Laura says, my favorite Beatles song. There you go, right? It's, yeah, it just does something. There are certain songs out there that just pull on a thread in a really delightful way. And that one does it for me too. So the next thing, along with the theme that we had, was theme of celebration. And that was a really hard one because I'm not a big, uh, when I, you know, sometimes when we think of celebration, we think of parties, we think of getting out there in big groups and neither one of those things is exactly my jam. But what came from the conversations we were having was that celebration is often about pleasure. It's often about reclaiming pleasure, protecting pleasure in our lives, honoring things in our lives, sometimes commemorating things in our lives. It can be small, intimate, celebration of the tiny things, the beautiful things, not necessarily big, gigantic, uh, kind of forced, <laughs> what was the phrase I heard recently? Uh, forced joy situations. No, it's about finding the spark of joy within ourselves and following it into that place of celebration and wonderfulness, whether it looks like just us having a nice walk, listening to the bird song, or hey, Farah, or perhaps it's something different than that. Perhaps it's a honoring family and that feeling of warmth again, bringing it back to that sense of light. Perhaps it's a party of one that we're having just for ourselves. So for tonight, I invite you to reflect on what music does and how we can use it in tonight's practice. You might want to sing wherever you are. You might want to play some music, some instruments. If you know how to do that thing, that's fantastic. But we're looking at celebration through the lens of music. So let's uh, let's get making, huh? Okay, now for anyone out there, you know how it goes. If you've been here before, you can make whatever you want to make. I am going to be working with various forms of watercolor and maybe some inks. Again, I was thinking 
about using a surface to hold something that is so much more than just a surface. How do you, to use music to hold something as special as the idea of celebration? That's a really interesting thing. It's an interesting challenge. And again, conjuring the song, we'll see how it goes. Laura's, oh, Laura, wonderful. So we're talking about what we're making as well as we do this through the night. You can let me know what you're working on, what you're thinking about working on. Let me know what songs inspire you or move you to celebrate things. Or perhaps there are special songs in your life that you've always used to honor celebratory moments. I want to hear about them if you feel like sharing them. Mm hmm Does that sound good? More tea. <laughs> Wonderful. And, you know, as I do, as I did just there, you might hear me humming throughout the night. Sometimes I just can't help it. Oh, lovely. So, okay, Farah's using watercolor too. And Laura is working, <laughs> making stuffed peppers. Oh gosh, that sounds good. Laura's making stuffed peppers and thinking of other favorite songs, Three Little Birds, and I Can See, I Can See Clearly Now. Yeah, we're getting into some interesting places about what celebration means. And you know what? I think this, um, so I'm going to conjure Here Comes the Sun in my head here. Yeah, so there is this feeling in the song, for me anyways, of relief and release and letting go and breaking through somehow. But it's an ease. There's an ease in breaking through. Yeah, I love that. And you know what's interesting? When you talk about those songs, Laura, when I think of those songs, they kind of have the same vibe for me as well, this sense of lightness and brightness and small things breaking through or large things breaking through. I suppose when you think of the sun breaking through the clouds, that's a big thing. <laughs> so to begin, but again, the sense of release and relief, the celebratory feeling of just that, being able to breathe, feeling free. Hmm. That feeling free, that's, that is a beautiful thing to be able to celebrate. Yeah, that's a lovely thing to honor in our lives. <laughs> and if you feel like adding any of these songs into the playlist, just let me know. Okay. Or no, don't even let me know. Just go add them, add them to our celebration playlist over on our Spotify channel, which I think is the living room community art studio or the living room art studio. Oops. Ha <laughs> ha. I'll have to check that out. You know what? I'll throw it in the link after the live stream in the doobly doo below this and we'll figure it out together. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And again, this is also a time for spontaneous art making. So I'm going to try not to think about this too much. And Farah, let me know what you're doing and how your watercolor is going, please. Or not. I'm not the boss of you. <laughs> and we can talk about other things as well, how people's lives are doing, all sorts of different things. Because this is a place of resource. Art hives are always places of resources. Not necessarily just about arts things or what we think of when we think of fine art. In fact, fine art can take a long walk off a short pier when it comes to <laughs> this evening. Sometimes it's okay to make a mess and let things happen. Let the art figure things out as we go along. I've always talked about with folks how the art seems to have a mind of its own. It has something it wants to do. It has something it wants to say. And it will find a way to say it, sometimes stopping us in our tracks, sometimes by confounding us with something that isn't working out the way our brain wants it to. It has a way of speaking. So we'll just let it speak. And Laura's saying, oh, letting go. Now Emily's, <laughs> now Emily's singing that song from Frozen. Yep. Go for it, Emily. Oh, I can hear you singing. If I imagine, I can hear you singing that. That is a, that's a pretty fantastic song. I'm not going to, I'm not going to, I'm not going to fight Emily on that. What other songs help people feel 
that sense of freedom. And you know what? Maybe it's not a song. Maybe it's a sound. Maybe it's a certain sound in your life. Because music can come from a lot of different sources. It's not just pre-recorded music. Uh, I'm thinking of the sound of the ocean or water lapping up against a dock or, oh, the sound of the train at nighttime, that whistle that comes through, some, or the sounds of gears shifting, sometimes sounding very haunting, just a beautiful, beautiful music uh, of our towns, of our cities, of where we live. <laughs> yep, it's actually another feel-good song Laura's saying, correcting me here. Let it go, of course. And Farah says, of course. Ah, nice. So Farah's using tape to resist. And then Farah's going to cut the tape to be wiggly lines. I don't have a song in mind. But music in general, mm. <laughs> music in general is all good. Oh, lovely, lovely, lovely. And Farah's really loving that sense of celebration there, saying uh, you're going to use the the resist to create wiggly lines that fit together like people in celebration. Do you know what? I have some contact paper here that I was going to use for some resist as well. It's interesting we're thinking along the same lines so much. I'm not going to do that, I don't think, unless this layer dries really quickly. We'll see what happens. I don't often use black, but I'm going to see where it takes me. Yeah, the celebration, people that coming together, the gathering, the not necessarily in big gatherings too, the idea of gathering, the idea of being with people that we love. Love love came up in some subtle ways in the Zoom. Love of self, um, love of the people we take care of in our lives, whether that's family, chosen family, animals, that sense of celebration that comes from knowing we have connection. And connection can be a lot of different things as well, because there might be some of us who, well, think of those moments where you can be on your own, you can feel alone, but then there's something that can sneak in sometimes. If we're, if we're open to it, if we're listening or willing to see it somehow, identify it, notice it, that sense of, I don't know, freedom, beauty, choice, but also Oh, what is that feeling? What is that feeling? I guess maybe it comes down to that sense of freedom again somehow. But yes, celebration. People intertwining, overlapping in one another's lives in beautiful ways. Unexpected ways sometimes. <laughs> and that, whoa, Farah says, whoa. Now is that for something that's happening in your art over there? Or the overlap, because I was thinking of resist as well. I was, I was, I was. I have really been enjoying that lately, masking things off. I broke out some of my fluid resists as well to take them to one of the campus projects we were doing. Because I think you can get such interesting effects and you don't need a lot of fancy stuff to do it. You can use masking tape. You can use contact paper. That's the stuff you line your cabinet shelves with. You can find it at the, you know, at different dollar stores or business depot-y kind of stores. I think sometimes they also sell book covers now, like uh, sort of con clear contact paper that you can use to protect books and things like that. I've been using a lot of that lately as well. Okay, so let me get back to this here. And celebration as well, I think of gratitude. Um, not like greeting card gratitude, but actual deep love, loving thanks and gratitude. The celebration of people that I love who are in the world. I think that's something too. Just the, the people that you might think about and even though you're not with them, you can somehow feel close to them suddenly. That hand for me engender a sense of celebration inside, internal celebration. Ah, and we have some, yes. <laughs> and Farah's saying, yeah, the woe is because we were both thinking of resist. I wish I had contact paper. It's easy to find if you got some, but you can also use like use that masking tape if you have it to build out or block out bigger areas. I like to put it on top of something. If you have a, a self-healing mat, 
And you can also layer it up and then use an X-Acto or something to cut it out to give some shape to it. Um, and use like make turn make your own contact paper essentially. That's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. Hmm. And Farah's asking, oh, how the campus projects are going? It looks fun. Well, you know what? I have to thank everyone who's been out there patiently kind of watching, waiting for us to get back into community while we've been working with the campuses. They've been fantastic. Um, we've been doing work with Durham College. We've been doing with, work with Ontario Tech and Trent uh, University Durham. And it is really lovely to introduce communities to new communities. And that's one of my hopes for the future that there can be just this intersectional, this interinstitutional coming together and making space for one another and really learning about what we need to grow and to develop and to thrive as a community, because those places are a part of our community as well. And they, they know that it's just very difficult sometimes to figure out, okay, how do we, how do we find places to connect? The living room studio space that we had at 149 was great for that. There was this it was kind of a, a permission to gather there when things might not have worked out so well if we brought, you know, the whole neighborhood to campus somewhere. It was a space where everyone really could come together. So how do we do that now? Well, I think we have to start with building relationships again. And that's that's where we're at right now, is rebuilding relationships with a whole new group of students, with a whole new uh campus culture, really. And the campus culture that we're seeing, I think it's fair to say it's not unusual. I think we're all feeling a little, a little unsure, a little, um, how do we do this thing again? How do we come together? How do we celebrate? How do we talk to one another? How do we do what we need to do? Uh, and it, you know, there's a sense of efficiency that is weaving its way through everything. Uh, and I think that's just a result of people doing what they've had to do over the last few years just to get through, just to get by. And that includes, you know, everyone, students, non-students, students of life, everyone to some extent or another has been in that place where it's like, okay, just got to get through, just got to get through, got to get through, got to get through. Now we're getting to a place where we can begin to break free and imagine to break through, to try out new things. And that's what we're beginning to see on campus, just warming everyone up saying, hey, you can do this too. This is something for you. Try it. Take a break. Take a break and try it. And it's an absolute pleasure to see people making art together who hadn't necessarily considered themselves artists. You know, we're breaking back into that wonderful zone. And Laura's saying, oh, it's Emily speaking through Laura. Hi, it's Emily. This has nothing to do with all this. And I have probably asked this before, but do you like, oh, how to train your dragon? That is an excellent question, Emily. Um, you know what I do? Okay, that's, but I, I have to admit, oh, this, this might be controversial. I have only seen the first movie and maybe the second movie. Maybe I haven't seen the second movie. Maybe I've got to watch that. Emily, you're reminding me. But I have to ask, why do you ask? Why do you ask, Emily? I'd like to know. Now it's my turn to ask you a question. Huh? <laughs> and it's okay to ask questions that have nothing to do with anything that we're talking about at all. I would put that out there. Permission for anyone, anyone at all to ask that question. Any questions? <laughs> and oh, hello, Fascinator. How are you doing? And oh, just finished cooking, Fascinator says, so I'm glad I still have time. Oh, st that's great. Still have time to uh, join us here. I'm so glad that you've had a chance to join us here. It feels like Thursday nights are working out well for folks. I hope they are at least, but feedback is always welcome. And Farah's saying, yeah, exciting to hear. Oh, excellent about the campus things. Uh, exciting to hear you're finding ways of bringing the community together and bringing life to campuses. Love it. Well, there's, you know, there's only one way to do it. And that's to get out there and experiment again. 
I think I've said this before, but it, in a lot of ways, it feels like we are returning, kind of turning back the clock a little bit. And, oh, that's interesting. Turning back the clock a little bit and building things back up in a way, or building new relationships. Let's see. Just taking a dry brush. I'm just going to remove some of that. I like, I like the idea, but not the intensity of how that came out. Oh, and Fascinator says, I agree. Well, thank you. And there's a yay from Laura, but I'm not sure if it's yay from Laura or Emily about how to train your dragon. But I do, I, I love the first one very much. So I'm, I'm game. I am there if we feel that it's time to have a watch along with any of the How to Train Your Dragon movies. I'm open to that. But I do remember the first one being really beautiful. And fun. And I, one of my kitty cats looks like that dragon. Why can't I remember that dragon's name? Oh, it's going to come to me. It's going to come to you. Or Emily, you can tell me. You can save me some time. <laughs> oh, and I have to see the third movie, Laura, uh, Emily is saying. Okay, I will. I will see it. And, oh, Emily likes drawing them, drawing the dragon or the other characters from that. So for those of you who may not know Emily, Emily, how would you describe yourself? I'm going to let you introduce yourself if you'd like to. And I can say what? I can say you were one of our earliest our earliest uh, artists who came to the studio, used to come to drop-ins with your mom. I could say that maybe you were one of our youngest artists uh, to join the living room community. But I don't know if that sort of fits with where you're at now. That was a long time ago, too. And Fascinator saying, missed the other, other live stream because I was sleeping. Unfortunately, this included your live, oh, the live YouTube debut. Hey, it's all good. I'm not the boss of you. You don't, you don't have to, I'm not paying you to be here, right? You do you. And that's one of the things I like about things being archived, that we can revisit things. You can watch things. You can speed me up. I don't mind. Speed me up so this whole thing goes a little faster. I'm okay with that. Although I do like taking time with the art, which is why I'm here for a whole hour. <laughs> Toothless. There's the name of the dragon. Toothless. <laughs> and okay, now we're introducing someone else on Laura's end. Hi, I'm Bean. Hi, Bean. How are you? And these live streams are all ages, by the way. Every once in a while, I might swear. That's the only thing I have to say, just by accident, usually. And that's okay. Expressive language. It's just like at the studio, never meant to minimize or harm or damage. That's violence. And if anyone wants to do that, well, then you're going to have to have a conversation with me. And Fascinator saying, okay, so Fascinator hasn't seen How to Train Your Dragon either. What? Oh, interesting. Oh, so this, okay, so, okay, I have to revisit this. So, okay, Laura's saying you have to, maybe there will be a watch along. Maybe we'll find a way to do that. That could be fun. We haven't really veered into watching movies together. And movies, filmmaking isn't in, as it's not in the hat as one of the themes. But as I'm letting music inspire me tonight, maybe, maybe that's the way film can be involved too. Make art about movies. Maybe, maybe, maybe. And okay, this is it. So Fascinator saying, I've even turned on the notifications. Is anyone else having issues with the notifications? Is anyone not getting notifications about when the live streams are coming? Let me know if that's been an issue for you. I'll look into it. This is a whole new world for us. So we're figuring it out as we go. But I'm glad you're here tonight, Fascinator. I'm glad you're here tonight. And hey, if anyone's joining us or watching us without jumping in the chat, you recently joined us. We are working with the themes of celebration and music. And tonight, I am using the song, a song to influence me, to inspire me. And I'm, it's a song everybody knows, so you can probably hear it in your head if you think about it. Here comes the sun. Right? It's there. It's there for all of us. So I'm going to actually take a moment right now. Uh, 
I think about this song, I'm going to actually think about the musicality of the song and see how it wants me to play with this piece. Ah, okay. So folks, Fascinator just saying you've been so busy into my, fl my flight simulator, uh, that development work, which sounds intense and fascinating. Uh, it's okay. It's all right. You just do you, right? We need to take care of ourselves. And that's one of the reasons why we're here in the first place, to give folks a time, like at least an hour or for however, however long you might want to stay in this live stream, just to slow down, to connect, but at the same time, have your space to be able to create in maybe a way that you don't often have a chance to create, especially if creativity is a part of your daily practice. That can be a tricky thing, right? So we're just here to that. And if you miss uh, if you miss them, that's okay. You can always tune in and watch them archived. It's all right. But I'm glad you're here now. <laughs> and then, no, oh, good. The notifications are working well for you. That's fantastic. That's how Fascinator hopped in tonight. So that, you know, folks, if you haven't clicked the notification button, do that, that notify me little button that's there underneath the live. It'll let you know when live streams are coming your way or when new content is being released here on our YouTube page. Okay. Oh, that's what it is. So we're just dropping back in that chat a little bit. Laura explaining Bean, where the name Bean comes from. So Emily is Bean. Bean is Emily's nickname. She's going to draw some dragons now. We'll share on Facebook. Then back to your peppers. That's good. And folks, you don't have to keep me company if you want to work on what you're working on. As you see, I'm quite capable of chatting to myself and keeping this celebration of art going right here. And then Fascinator saying, currently working on the cockpit for a plane I've been modeling for a 2003 flight simulator game. What? That's wow. And offering as well some clarification that obviously sometimes I forget these things. The clicking on the notification, it's the bell icon. So click on the bell if you're already subscribed. And that, thank you for that. I love that clarification. Thank you. That's why I have all of you wonderful folks out there to help me along with this process. Okay. So my lovely paper here is warping quite a bit and that's okay. I don't mind that sometimes. What do I need next? So I was thinking about the musicality of the song. So that would be Does have this song does have kind of a, a tripping a, a trickling along it's kind of like a creek bubbling along kind of vibe to it I wonder what I can do with that in cases like this I just gotta feel it out I just gotta feel it out and I might layer some stuff up too the sin of adding in white paint on top of the watercolor but I'm gonna mix it up a whole lot here and I'm using the gouaches over here. Mm -hmm. What do I want? I think I want to create some sort of vibrant something. <laughs> oh, that's what I get for mixing up my gouache, my watercolor gouache with acrylic <laughs> on this on this plate. The white is acrylic, and I can probably go and try and reactivate that for hours and hours and hours, and it's not going to happen. So let's try this over here then. Interesting. Okay, so Fascinator got some high tech stuff going on here. The FS add on dev development is a bit intense in that there's a wealth of info to learn what you're making since it's more than just a 3D modeling. So, your creativity in this area, this is, I think, well beyond anything that I've experienced. And again, just another wonderful reminder about the different kinds of different types of creativity we have out there in the community, right? I think sometimes in Art Hive land, we might get a little caught up on, you know, the hand skills of hand making, um, 
cultural materials, all of those kind of things. And yet, digital art and digital making and making and creating online, sharing online, using what we do to um, embellish and inspire, you know, just sort of the collage of digital possibilities that's available now is, is quite astonishing. But this kind of work, when it comes to game development, when it comes to simulator development, this is a little bit beyond me. I've got to be honest. These are tools that I don't have access to. And if I did, don't know exactly what I'd do with them, to tell you the truth. So Fascinator saying Microsoft even made documents for various elements of the sim for developers. So, and just like how we have artists who love to hop in and even offer a helping hand, the FS add-on, ah, oh, thank you, Devel dev community, development community, is very helpful because people there have experience, who up to even a decade or so. So yeah, I can imagine that there are people who've been in this field for such a long time, uh, quietly working away behind the scenes often, and to have a chance to connect, to share these skills, to have their voice, their creative voice recognized in an interesting way. Yeah. I can, I get it. I I can imagine just, I'm imagining what it might be like when everyone gets together, this sense of online or in person, this, just this abundance of information and kind of the celebration of knowledge. Hey, there's something to celebrate, right? The different skills and ideas and the bits and pieces that one person might have that help someone else just find a way to finish off or to complete, or the bit of code that helps someone break through to the next stage of their project. You just never know. And not all of that for me is creative. And development, yes. So I'm reading these shorthands on there and I'm not even sure what I'm reading sometimes. That is not an invitation to try and fool me, folks. Why did I put that out there? Anyways. <laughs> I'm feeling like this needs a little bit of something. But what? I know. Maybe it's warmth. That's a piece of this celebratory puzzle. soften those edges a little bit after all. It is an interesting challenge to try and think of a song, hold a song in your head and chat with folks. How are folks out there doing? Is anyone else using a song to create? Or is anyone creating a song inspired by the idea of celebration or whatever? Whatever, maybe, I mean, the, the links are very loose sometimes. Sometimes what we start focusing on celebration as a theme, it might take us to the thing we're celebrating and that might travel us somewhere else altogether, which is one of the reasons why I kind of love having a theme to spark things off. Oh, this is going to be interesting here. Yeah. <laughs> what do I need? I think I need a uh, rag. Where's my rag? Oh my goodness, all the way over there. Come here. Leaning out of frame, everybody, just for a second. I'll be back. All right, here we go. Let's do this. And maybe this is where, let's see. <gasps> Okay, I have an idea. I have an idea. And Farah, oh, let's, thanks for the catch up. Thanks for the check in. Farah says, I was focused on my art. So looking down the whole time, listening, doing, looked up. Your art looks beautiful. Oh, and the colors are great. Oh, Farah, you, my goodness. <laughs> so lucky to be here. Anyone, I mean, that's something to celebrate, isn't it? to be a part of something, some place where you can return to and have, have a sense of connection, have a sense of, you know, being welcomed in spite of everything sometimes. 
I'm very grateful that with the living room, every time I've had to walk away or take breaks, every time I've felt and fallen into a dark place, because let's admit, like, I think it's important for all of us to admit or check in with that, that um, maybe not for ourselves personally, but sometimes it is very difficult to celebrate. Sometimes the theme of celebration, again, that sense of forced enjoyment, we don't want to go there. It's not for us. We might be struggling. We might be just, just doing our best to keep in that place of okayness, which is hard to connect and link to celebrate, like celebration. Although I... I don't think the two, I don't think the two are so far apart. I think we don't have to let celebration be co-opted by ideas of, yeah, forced enjoyment and maybe past ideas of what it meant to honor ourselves and to take pleasure in something that we're doing and to create opportunities to, to what? To protect that idea of it's okay. It's okay to feel good. It's okay to feel bad. And it's also okay to feel good. Oh, we're talking about music. So here we go. Uh, Fascinator's been listening to a few, including, oh, Brian Bennett's Chain Reaction. And given dates here so that folks can check it out. Fantastic. Thank you. I'm not sure if I'm familiar with that song. And Fascinator's saying, the more I look at this, what, oh, the more you miss watercolor, we'll break them out. Come on. Never too late, and you know that. This is playing. All this is is just play. Just play. And I think if I have some... Oh, yeah, that might work. I'm looking around for tissue paper because usually I, I have some just lying around all the time, but I'm not finding it. But again, I might turn to that glassine paper and see what it can do. I have an idea. And it, yeah, so it had interesting when we reflect on the materials or the mediums that we haven't returned to in a long time. It is interesting to see sometimes to check in with ourselves and acknowledge it's, if it's been a while since you've used watercolor. Pick them up, pick some up, and play with them again. Rebuild that relationship. Yeah, not exactly sure what I'm doing here. <laughs> Other than playing. Other than playing. And asking myself, do I want that? Do I want this in my life? In my celebratory picture here? Yeah, I think that is okay. I think it's actually okay. Oh, wow. Unexpected color combinations. Again, honoring that sense of returning to that little point there. For anyone out there who might be struggling a little bit and struggling to connect with this theme, this idea of celebration, um, I think almost everyone can find some link to music in their life, right? That is something true. Celebration, on the other hand, if you're not in a place to connect with that right now, that's okay. Do what feels right for you. Or look to look to see if there's any, any small stepping stone, any small pebble that might take you there if you want to go there in an authentic way for you. Not for anybody else, but for you. The things that open those doors for you. That can help you reconnect with the possibility that if anything's worth celebrating, you are. In whatever place or state you are right now, you, all of you, but you, you and you specifically, are worth celebrating. <laughs> Interesting. And Fascinator saying, any chance this could be your phone wallpaper because I think it makes a very beautiful one. Hmm, I'm going to think about that. That could be a coffee perk. That could be a perk that I put up on our coffee page for folks that support us. See, this is how ideas happen. It was only, was it only a few weeks ago we were talking about the neighborhood tour this summer and imagining it like some kind of music festival. 
this is where great ideas happen. They come together in community from different kinds of suggestions, unexpected sometimes, but fabulous. And Farah saying, I taught a class to seniors with watercolor and they all loved it. So I told, <laughs> I told them to crack out their watercolors at home that they admitted they have, but never wanted to use. See, this is exciting and interesting, this sense of fear and why, why don't we try things with the materials we have at hand? Why don't we try that? I think people are scared of fluidity, that sense of I won't be able to stop if it starts or what if I put too much paint on or too little paint on or what if I can't blend or what if I add too much, all of those things. Uh, I think sometimes people can be uncomfortable with that sometimes. We don't need to be, but I think we are. I think sometimes so afraid of making messes, but it's, you know, if we're lucky enough, you can paint on anything too. That's the other thing. You don't need fancy wall, like watercolor paper. And, oh, thank you. So uh, Fascinator offering Chain Reaction is basically some very catchy electropop 70s music. Now I definitely need to check this out. <laughs> it's also a little something I used to get me up. So, okay. All right. That's good. It's music that helps us feel what? Feel alive. That was a theme that came up. Gets us moving. Gets us excited about entering into the day, whatever kind of day that might be waiting ahead of us. Oh, let's see here. I think I might need to... Da -da 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 -da. And... Uh... And okay, all right. So I've got to listen to this song, Chain Reaction. Your favorite part is the ending part of that song. Thank you. I will. Oh, hello, Heart That User. It's nice to see you here. Welcome to the live stream. And Fascinator saying you could, oh, you could photo or scan the thing and post it to, yes, I will. So, okay. Coffee, for those of you who don't know, we recently started it. I really like the platform and I'm hoping to use it more and more and use it as a place to gather, to connect people, but also... Uh, to reactivate certain things like our art shop or exhibiting other people's work. All of those things are still in the works. And hopefully sooner rather than later, we'll be able to get out there with those ideas in full force. But if you haven't checked out our coffee page, please feel free to do so. And if you like what you see there, or if you like what you see here, you can always buy us a coffee. Every little donation there helps us do what we do here. And it's just a really easy kind of uh, virtual or digital tip jar that allows people to support us the same way they might have when we were at the studio. And folks can also subscribe. So if you're missing that Patreon vibe that we had, uh, feel free to check it out and let us know what you think. And Laura's saying, oh, there's what? <laughs> so we're getting updates about what's happening in the community through some other fantastic arts organizations. It sounds like over where you are, Laura, a puppet parade is happening. Okay, you let us know when that is, if it's Critical Mass is hosting it. Hmm, maybe we can get out there and bring out some of the giant ones we have in storage and get them working again. That's actually one of the themes we're thinking of working with this summer, creating some giant puppets. Oh, there's still a lot to figure out, but that's an exciting, it's an exciting problem to have. All right. I like how all of these colors are overlapping and forming, blending. This is the messy part where I, I sometimes have difficulty trusting, but it will happen, right? It will happen. And sometimes I don't get everything finished before the live stream ends. You know that, and that's okay. I'm going to keep working on it, having a little fun with it, seeing where it takes me. And, hmm. Hmm. I'm going to do a little close up and see what's going on here. Let's see. So it's a little big for that close up, but it's good to see some of the elements that are in here. Okay, okay.
Yeah, okay. This might be where I come in. Okay, all right. See, all of this is all my ramblings. You see my ramblings? This is what I do. I ramble. Okay. I ramble and I talk to myself. That's how I get things done. I think I need to have something. What? Let me try something, folks. And Fascinator asking, uh, I don't know if anyone else does this, but in my player, I like to seek directly. Oh, you like to go directly to your favorite part of a song and uh, seek it again and again after it's over. I've had that experience. You're not alone there. There are certain songs, certain bits and pieces and elements of songs that are so incredibly satisfying to hear, or they stir up something so magical within us. Um, yeah, no, I get that. I get that. <laughs> and sometimes it can be such, there's certain things, certain songs in my life that are so silly sometimes. It's just this like, why, why, why am I needing to listen to this? Or that's just the way music works, isn't it? It is an excellent communicator requiring just a willingness, a willingness to let it wash over you. Don't need to understand the language, know how it's happening. It's something each one of us can appreciate. And again, not just music that artists have created or written, things that are played on the radio. We could be talking about the sounds of nature as well, the music of what we hear around us on any given day. And some artists use that to create. Hmm. Let me see what this song wants. And let that dry and see what happens over there. Oh, it gets so scary when I think about adding things in. Hmm. <laughs> Oh, and it's good to know that, see, Farah's in the same boat, not going to finish soon. Folks, you don't need to. You can keep on creating. You don't have to stop just when this live stream stops. If you're in the flow of things, let it keep going. Let it take you where it needs to take you. If you need to set your work aside and do something else, you can do that too. Learning how to listen to these parts of ourselves and what our art wants to say is a very interesting part of the journey. Again, what I'm doing here is interesting. I don't usually do work like this. Let's see. For some reason, that's what it wants to do. Definitely does have 80s vibes. Uh, Farah's just finished putting out all finished up putting all the tape down for the resist and you haven't even started painting yet. <laughs> you know what? That's okay. That is definitely something that happens all the time. I think of everyone out there can relate to what you're going through there. It's kind of like, you know, the thing you want to do on the weekend that you get everything ready to go, all the materials to bake the cake, the ingredients or what have you, or you prepare for this thing you want to, this event you want to go to, and then it comes and it happens and it passes. And Ah, almost, almost ready. That's what this, we can do that here. We can help you prepare. We can help get you to the next step. That's all right. Because that's how things happen, right? That's how things happen. We may not be able to do everything we want to do all at once. That's okay. Who says you have to? Sometimes it's enough just getting into that place where we're ready, where we're willing, where there's something happening inside of us and it hasn't yet broken out. And then when it does break out or 
finally make its way into the work somewhat, some way, you know, finding its way out of our brain and into the world. What a beautiful time that is. And that, again, is something to celebrate, that feeling of release and a relief as the idea, the thought becomes the idea and the idea becomes something sort of like a thing that's out there now outside of us that we can look at and love and appreciate or have a conversation with. Sometimes not a nice one, right? That art conversation that I know all of us have had when things haven't quite worked out the way we wanted them to. Oh, interesting, fascinator talking. So there's a, um, Ma a Malian couple who, huh? there's a story there. What's the story? Where's the story? Did I miss it? What happened? Where did it go? You can come back with that. I, I can be patient. Uh, fascinator saying, I've got a few incomplete masking tape planes and one I have to rework. All those complete incomplete projects are just, it's just potential. And there will be times where you don't return to something. And you know, that might be the, you know, that might be exactly where that project needs to be. Maybe it's done. Maybe it is at, you know, complete. But for a lot of us, I think knowing that there's always an opportunity to return it's not a bad thing. Not everything has to happen all at once. Not everything can. Sometimes things need to incubate or marinate. Right? <laughs> Fascinator saying, oh, the oh, the masking tape. Yeah, the masking tape planes. Uh, they're not finished yet. There's one you have to rework, but then Fascinator says, I suddenly worked on a certain few aircraft models for FS because no one has made, oh, so no one has made and published their own. This is exciting. You're on the growing edge here. I really love the idea of this community and hopefully one day I might have a chance to connect with them. We have a few folks here where we are in Oshawa who are absolutely obsessed and involved in that world and have done extraordinary things. Uh, but again, I think it's something that you have to experience in person one way or another. And Farah's saying, oh, thanks, Mary. If it turns out all right, maybe I'll share it on Instagram. Please do. Um, <laughs> uh, please do share your pictures for anyone who's interested. We generally tomorrow, I'll post uh, a completed or a work in progress version of what I've been working on tonight. I like taking time to complete it and just tune in, you know, away from the chat a little bit to see if what I'm working on feels right to me and uh, you are welcome to post what you've been working on as well you can also post in the in your own instagram accounts you can tag the living room let us know how it turned out you heck you can send me an email if you like or not at all i'm not the boss of you it's your art do with it what you want Got some fine abstractness happening here. There's something a little playful about this. There's something a little whimsical about this. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. It's always really, really interesting when something starts happening with me that feels so completely so completely foreign and oh okay there we go so fascinator completing the story fantastic oh my goodness uh so there's a malian couple who albeit have no eyesight have done wonders with their music oh yes amadou and mariam have been combining west african music with various styles their music is mostly in french and bambara but they also sneak in a little english they even made one song that is wholly english i i have some of their songs i love them I did not know I did not know that they were visually impaired. I had no idea about that. I'm going to have to look into that and see. But I do know their music and they are extraordinary. They're also huge superstars, celebrities. If I'm, if, um, if I'm, uh, I think I'm correct in that. They are huge. Uh, just not necessarily super well known here in Western culture as much. Uh, but yeah, they are extraordinary. Oh, I got to put some of their music on our, our celebration playlist over on Spotify. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Get working on that. And then, oh, 
And then one song from them, a fascinator says you like that the fascinator likes uses all three languages. Why not? I only have one language. I am lazy. But I'm working on that too. I'm working on that too. Yeah, I don't know what's happening with this, with these little pieces here. This is fascinating. <laughs> right now it feels a little speed racer, which is maybe the Oshawa sneaking in. Mm. I'm going to have to figure this out. I'm going to have to figure this out. Folks, thank you so much for joining me tonight. I know it is after, it is after eight. And I will be taking a break from this and stepping back and coming back at it with some fresh eyes. Maybe after I've had a little snack, I'd like to see what it looks like just underneath. No, maybe not that edge. So that's a nice clean line there where I've built in a resist again, just that lovely little trick of putting that masking tape down. But I feel like it needs something and it might come up through building transparencies upon transparencies, layers upon layers, which isn't exactly, you know, the watercolor thing to do. Watercolor oftentimes from the fine arts folks is more like less is more. But for me using all these different kinds of things, I think there's an opportunity to really play here. And, and I might add in some collage depending on how I feel. But to start, I think I want to let this dry and then see what happens when I step back into it with a little bit of time. <laughs> this is wonderful. Yeah, so it sounds like we're getting in, again, the conversation about music is just heating up as we're coming to, as we're wrapping up here in the live stream. But again, please feel free to throw your songs into the playlist if you like. And again, being reminded that celebration is all about, it's, it's much more personal than we might think it is at first. Celebration can be small. It can be intimate. It can be personal. Celebration can be done with ourselves, for ourselves. Celebration can honor a struggle that we are working through, a challenge that we've decided to tackle but haven't yet had what we feel is success with. Success, of course, is contextual for everyone, but celebration can happen at any stage in the journey of any of our lives when we want to recognize something within ourselves or for ourselves or with our family or our culture, the whole thing, right? It has meaning because we give it meaning, not because we hop on the bandwagon for what someone else considers celebration to be. So wherever you are at right now, I hope that you find something within yourself or your life or some sort of potential or spark that you can honor through celebration. And, you know, I think it's time to go listen to some music now. And I might just pick up on some of the musicians we've heard in this, <laughs> in this thread here and have some fun. Uh, have a snack listen to some music, then come back to this painting and see what I can do with it. But in the meantime, thank you all for being here tonight, having fun with me and exploring watercolor and exploring music and exploring what celebration means to us and talking about movies that we should watch together, ways we can come together and be together and enjoy, just enjoy one another. So thank you for being here, folks. <laughs> and I'm loving this conversation. This is so great. Yep. We're going to have to check them out. So folks, take note of the musicians in the chat and let's bring some new music to next time's uh, ne the live stream next week and see what we can do with it. Oh, but yes, check out the calendar. Make sure there is a live stream next week. I might need to take a, a, a day off. Um, so watch that space and make sure you're checking back in. Again, the notify button here on YouTube, the bell, if you're subscribed, will help remind you when we have new live streams coming or new content coming your way. And if you hadn't had a chance yet to check out our coffee page, please do so. I think the link is in the doobly-doo below. And yeah, thank you for being here tonight and chatting with me, keeping me company while we get creative. It's always a pleasure to make art with you.
Always a pleasure to be inspired by you. And I can't wait to do it again. Thanks, everybody. Have a wonderful night. Bye. <laughs> oh, yeah, and share your pictures or your art or whatever you're doing whenever I do post it. Feel free. I love seeing other people's work or learning about other people's work. I miss that about the old ways. Okay, bye. Boop. <laughs>